of splash all the way from Eco Atlantic where they started over 30 years ago. That's how they were moving. They were moving from Eco Atlantic to Niru, from there down to the permanent site. He has been in this business of CEO for over a very long decade. Not one, not two, not three. If you hear anything splash, even from a pair, just make sure splash. Any vehicle, any driver, they will bring you down to that place. It's a bus stop, a permanent place. But I think our person has been on this business for a very long time. It's going to tell us how far, how well to succeed on such kind of things. He will let us know we the little ones that are looking up to him. He's our mentor in every way. But any way you can think of it, call up brother Eko is always there to attend to you. I thank you, sir. I greet you. The one and only brother Eko. Let's give him a round of applause. One and only, only that name. Was he that name? Add S to it. S, drop the P. Only the P will find itself called. Splash, for that matter. Easy. You know, easy. Oh. Bros, I thank you, sir. I greet you all. And also, we'll be calling on another wonderful sister of ours. CEO, for that matter. Sister that has three professions. The three CEO. Easy. Hello, it's you. Before I start, please, let's give the sister, the sister a wonderful round of applause. Sister Wan DK, to please come forward. As, as my able sister is coming forward, Sister Wan DK has a PSE in business administration. And also, our dear sister is also the CEO of. While well, I go through his profile, a little, just a little one, though. If I say, make I read your profile, you don't go finish, though. I just want to give a small, just two, three lines. I just give one. If I start with the profile here, we don't finish this program. Sister Wadi K has a PSC in public administration, is the CEO of TCOM Engineering Limited, and also the CEO of Stay with Tesa Ventures, and also O49 Stay Concept, three of them. Please let's give Sister a wonderful round of applause. CEO 1, CEO 2, CEO 3. You know, easy. If you don't give, I will give a big round of applause. Please let's give a wonderful round of applause for our able sister. She's going to tell us how far as well, what we need to know, how to grow our business. Whatever is worth doing, is worth doing well. It is not to start it, but it's consistency that matters. How far you can stay, how far you can hold on to your business. They are going to let us know, they will give us the great insight. And also our little and wonderful brother, our moderator for today, the small but mighty brother. It's a junior MFLA in the Lord, not the MFLA in Abuja. I had the issue. This one is a MFLA in the Lord, the MFLA of TKS. The one that has been doing the work, the wonderful work of God. Brother Isumuna, to please come forward. Our uh, brother Isumuna, as you can see, has been on the accounting system for several years. That's why they make comparable for us. It's a small body, not the sickness. As you see, brother, he has been in this for over a decade of time, doing this accounting job. But today is going to do a big moderation for a, for a session or panel session for today. If we're going through one or two questions to ask the brothers and sisters that are here, stand by, so that they can be giving us some good and wonderful reply. As you can see, brother, our dear brother, Isumuna, I will just go through his own listing as well very briefly. Yes, that is, you see, there's a train of a in the way you should go. Sister, don't find brother Komo. Look at sister here, he's in the front of us. He will give brother a chance to walk today, okay? David Isumuna is an accomplished accountant and an ERP consultant with a remarkable seven years track record as a finance officer with a national NGO headquarters in Lekki, Lagos. Lekki, national NGO headquarters. He carry with. The three people that are here, I'm gonna forget, the way to the car and not go there. As you can see, he was trained in using and developing diverse accounting software including customization. He has a wealth of experience in customizing and implementing accounting software solutions tailored to meet diverse business needs, ranging from QuickBook, Tally, ERP9, to comprehensive economic resource planning system. Auga, I stop her for you. If I continue, it's still long ago. I don't want to know this. Anybody who need the profile, go forward for her. Be just the down, be just the reader sometimes, where you do just give inspiration to be inspired. So but I will use this medium as well to hand over the mic to the moderator for today. Our dear brother Isumuna, I thank you all for your time. Opioid, opioid, action in Christ. 
Thank you very much, our uh, wonderful um, MC. Um, I, I rise to give my sincere gratitude to Jehovah the Almighty God and His Son Jesus Christ for making it possible for all of us to assemble here today to have this monthly meeting. You will quite agree with me that today's monthly meeting or this monthly meeting is one of the different. Um, so we intend to um, um, tweak the usual uh, monthly meeting. Um, we wanted to expose ourselves to a lot of business ideas. Also have our members come forth with their business items to showcase to the people of God. So that at the end of the day, we will begin to understand each and every um, the endeavors of um, each and every one of us here. So that if we need anything, we can easily reach out to um, our own people as opposed to going outside with our hard earned resources. Times are quite difficult. So the small ones that we are using to purchase these outside is better than we use it to excuse me, patronize ourselves. It will be a long way to help each and every one of us. Also, not just having the business, but it's also important that we also understand the little rudiments when it comes to business. How to record um, the little money that comes in and the little money that goes out of our businesses. And also how to plan strategically in terms of sustainability how to keep the business afloat. Um, I know it takes a lot for people to conceptualize, to get business ideas, to put them down, a lot of thinking that is coming, and then you begin to source for money. Either you go to family, friends, or you go to the bank, or from savings that you've done over a period of time, and then you invest that money. After you invest that money, the hustling do not end there. You have to meticulously nurture that business. You have to record. You have to think out of the box to sustain the business because Nigeria is also a difficult place. Sometimes government policies are also there to shrink your business. So you have to be very dynamic, find a way out of all of these challenges. So that is why we have our wonderful panelists here. I have on my right, we have um, Rekio. Rekio has been in business, um, hospitality business for a very long time now. So we are going to tap into his world of knowledge. It's going to also expose us to how he has been successful over the years in business by God's grace and power. Also, on my left, on my left hand side, we have our sister Nikki. Um, yes, sister Nikki, let me end it. So, um, she also comes with a lot of experience. Um, I, while our MC was reading out um, the profile, I saw something to Tico Engineering Limited. Um, please, is this um, style with us adventures? Okay, style with us adventures, and then um, 0409 state concept. Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot for there's hospitality as well. Wonderful. So, you see, so we have um, great personalities here with me. So, we'll dive into the business of the day, and at the end of the day, I hope that we we'll all benefit, we we'll all take one or two away from here that will impact on our business positively. By God's grace and power. So at this time, I give you indulgence to have my seat while um, we um, speak to our panelists and um, tap into their world of um, experience. So just more like an icebreaker. Um, so, um, bro, let's start with you. So just tell us um, about your business endeavor and um, how many years that you've been into um, your business. Thank you. Thank you. Sincere thanks to Jehovah the Almighty God and His beloved Son Jesus Christ for giving me this great opportunity to stand before you and uh, share knowledge about business. So, here I am. Uh, in business, first thing is uh, the grace of God, the special grace of God because. Uh, there are so many disadvantages. The disadvantages are more than the advantages. Finance, workers, so on and so forth. But with the special grace of God and the proper planning, you can succeed and survive in business. Today in Nigeria, especially now, present in Nigeria, most young boys don't want to work anymore. 
if you have uh, six girls, you have like maybe two boys. If everybody wants to do POS business now on their own, and you will work with somebody so that they, when they see cash, they run away with cash. They are not really good people anymore, like they used to be. But give or take, whatever you are doing, first thing you say, God Almighty, I want you to be part of this kind of business. Then uh, your planning, your strategies, what type of business you are doing, it matters to you. Like uh, you don't go into a business that you do not understand. You go into a business that you have a feel for, like the way you grew up, the things you did while you were growing up as a child matters when you are doing business. So the, the business will be part of you. Even if it's like the business is your cross stream. You know, some people now they see somebody selling Gary and making profit. They tell me Gary I won't sell now. You see this one selling like this. This is not this one I want to do. No, it's wrong. Find your own. Look for whatever you can do that will give you that you have a little bit of knowledge that you will now start learning more about what you are about to do. That is what I believe will inspire people to grow more. Then, uh, as far as the uh, running your business and keeping it for a longer time. You know, you need a... Okay, sir, let me just pause here for a while. We'll get into all of that. Um, yet, let's not um, um, go um, so fast. Um, sister, um, back to you. Um, so just um, give us um, a bit of an idea how long you've been in all of this business, when you started nurturing all of this business, and uh, the, the drive, the passion for all of this business. Thank you. Okay, let me start. I believe that you know about the... Uh, and or you need the opportunity and also to be used and so you really need the opportunity to um, uh, share my knowledge of the church and the youth of the day. So I'll take it. Um, I've always been a, a business person, even before I, I think before I even went into it, I've always loved the idea of the business buying and selling, and I've always liked um, to work with my hands. So it's all about passion for me. And the first business that was mentioned is actually my late uh, husband's business, which I inherited. And by the grace of God, I've been able to sustain it. It's going to four years now, and it's been running. I didn't have any knowledge of it. I had a little knowledge of it because most of the time we work from home. So phone calls and maybe discussions we had. And also when I got into the business, I had to learn, I had to ask questions. I had to learn from, you know, call the people they work with and, you know, they, they were nice enough to put me to go. For the past four years, it's been smooth, it's been, it's been running like that. It's not like it used to when he was here, but uh, by the grace of God, it's still, the business is, is still on, so I thank God for that. My other business is, um, I've always been into style and into fashion, so it's, always something that I have big passion for. I like to style people, I like, um, I, I used to sew, I, I, I was into that fashion business for a very long time, I think up to like 10 years, then I, I quit because, I didn't quit because it wasn't um, lucrative or I wasn't making money. I quit because of staff issues, you know, just like he said, they don't want to work, people don't want to work, they just want to make fast money. So I was always having issues with tailors and not, and it was stressing me out, so I decided to close that. But I knew, I know that I all, I've always had the passion for styling places, styling homes, styling people and all that. Then the second business that is a style with Asa, that's an interior business. So I do interiors, I do renovations, I do kitchens, I do wardrobes, so that's more basically like it. Then the other one is um, hospitality. I have an apartment where I run. People come and rent to stay. It's more like it's not a hotel per se. It's uh, a shortlet. So it's in apart. It's in uh, studios and uh, and suits. So people come and rent and use the place and go. But recently there has been some challenges. So I'm going to leave it uh, here for now until we get into that. Thank, thank you very much. In fact, I, I will stay with you um, a bit longer. Um, so, um, in all of this, um, could you please share how you've been able to um, track um, your business activities um, 
the method or the approaches or what you've learned over the years in terms of experience wise because I know it's wanted for you to get funds into the business then once you put that money into the business how do you consistently track the performance of that money because I know that this is what area most businesses suffer even in very corporate um, environment they also suffer in areas like this so for starters once you're getting money and you put into the business for you have you been able to ensure that you track these funds starting up is not always that easy you know when you invest money you don't expect to get returns immediately sometimes it's a struggle most times not even sometimes most times especially when you are a newbie or maybe you're not well mentored you don't know you don't know the business very well you're bound to struggle my business is more of like a one-man business. I don't have a lot of staff, so I'm able to track what I do, as in what is coming in and what is going out. So, thereby, it's easier for me. Not when I have a lot, like, or like when someone who has a lot of staff strength, and even when, when you have that staff strength, you're, you're looking at losses in the form of people who are pilfering and the rest, who are not keeping good records. So, Anything, sorry, I also have a store where I sell interior items. So it's easier for me to try because I know basically what I have there. I have a sales girl, I have a driver, I have other people that work for me. Some work for me on contract. When I have contracts, I call them. So it's not like we are permanently working. So it's um, easier for me because everything goes through me, everything goes by me. So I'm, I'm able to track it and know when I'm making losses, when I need to adjust and then when I need to make some sort of decisions as, as a don't don't go ahead with this project or go ahead with this project. That's how it works. So for your shop, um how do you record um your goods? You have um, Yes I have a, I have it inventory. Okay you have inventory. And at first I used to call someone to come and take inventory but I also realized that um the person would come and also in cohorts with you know the sales girl who is there and they do some sort of and just like i said just because i know ev almost everything i'm someone who can come in now and look at it and know that something is missing and it hasn't been recorded that it has been sold so i have to cross that out and so now what i do is anybody who is coming in i just i I'll always have an inventory at the end of the month i know what i have sold what has gone on what has gone off the store i know what i have sold i'll record it and what is remaining. So even if I have a new staff today, you're coming in to see the inventory, I'll just allow you, you I have the record, I'll allow you to go to, because I don't want a situation where I'm the one telling you this is what I have here. And then maybe probably tomorrow you come up and say, and when you came in, because I've had that experience before, when I came in, when I came at that, when I came in, uh, you just told me that this is what in the shop, is in the shop. I didn't actually see for myself this is what in the, is in the shop, because I must have complained that something is missing. You understand what I'm saying? So, that is where I track my, I have records of it. Things are coming and things are go out. Receipts, invoices and the rest. That's how I keep my, right. my records. Thank, thank you very much. Um, let me come back to you. So, um, you're into um, hospitality and I know for, for your kind of business, um, record keeping is very, very crucial. Because not just you, you also have staff that do work with you. So, that means on a daily basis you need to be track you need to be tracking what comes in and what goes out. So talk to us about this. How how do you how do you achieve all of this in terms of tracking your assets? In my business, record is a daily basis daily business. We we count all items. We will sell drinks. And some of them are in carton of two or some are in carton of twenty four. We my bar have about 186 items. We count everything one by one, you see, on a daily basis. So I have an account of it. And uh, we use uh, uh, the accounting software that we use uh, this thing as well uh, to, to check the books. So wherever I am, I just to my go through. I have the closing record of yesterday which becomes the open record of today. So the closing record of today becomes open record of tomorrow. So therefore, on my own, even if I know them when they are counting, 
I know what they have, what they might have sold with the cash that came in. So I'll do my own account, analyze it, and see this is what we have for today's sales. In, before the analysis, we have the cash account, which tells us what everybody sold for the day. I have like uh, eight or nine waiters of which we sell. What they do, they, their daily sales comes in, the cash, the payments, transactions, transfers, and so on, comes in. That one is easier. So at the end of it, some of them, especially the new staffs, we can falsify POS papers. People who want went as far as photocopying POS, they cut it into the proper side and brought it for record purposes. Some of them can even steal from the fellow staff and break through. So if you are not intelligent and you are not sharp, the POS document that have been used for a uh, staff A, staff B will bring it and say it's our own. So if you are not careful, we just write and uh, somebody will just claim 35,000 <laughs> hours <laughs> without knowing. So you have to be <laughs> to bring your head down when you are doing that account. It's not an ordinary account because you deal with intelligent images. <laughs> you understand me? And, uh, when they are acting, and they don't even think. So you take your time to really know what is at stake. Everybody in the establishment wants to cheat because the accountant that you employ. So you're on your own. So what you do is, like I said initially, is by the special grace of God and that knowledge that you have. I I read this agreement as well, and I have accounting knowledge. So. I follow them the same way they are following me. And we let it be was somebody uh, cheats today and I cash that person. The next I'll be looking at for that same thing because I've got to be experienced now. And so on and so forth. But like what we do, we don't wait till the end of the month or till the end of the week before we take stock. My stock taking is on a daily basis. So at the end of the day, we know what you saw. What you are going to company and you pay instantly, otherwise, you take one of your belongings. So that is how we Yeah, so um, one big takeaway here is um, stock taking everything. I, I, I mean, it's very crucial. Um, so, but let me stay to you a bit. Um, so, in terms of wastage, um, with um, the kind of work you do, it's clear that if you're not um, paying very good attention and um, your skill set, you do not put it into use. Perhaps one or two things might go wrong. So, in terms of wastage, how do you try as much as possible to ensure that whatever thing or whatever um, money that you're going to put out there into the business does not constitute um, wastage, but rather it goes into um, the life of the business and keeps the business afloat? You know, like um, when you talk about wastage, I'll start from the freezers. If you put on deep freezers, because the chill drinks easily and faster than, than the chillers. The chillers will not break bottles, but the deep freezers will break bottles. You have running light for a period of like uh, 12, 15 hours. You need to shut it down so that they don't break, it doesn't break bottles. That is for the drinks. Then in the kitchen, wastage too. You talk about uh, items that we have catfish, live catfish, they have life chicken. This life chicken, sometimes they die. And once they die, it is part of wastage. If you don't buy the live chicken for two, three days, because they are old layers, they are not in the poultry, they don't sustain long. And once they die, it's wastage when you throw them away. Likewise, the live fish too, those things you throw away. They sometimes too, things you keep for counting, I changed the people in charge of uh, the stock in the kitchen. Like uh, every every two three days, I change some. You'll be the one in charge of this kitchen. So when the person is leaving, there might be counting or some other food items that we are not really taking care of. And at the end of the day, those things might get spoiled, or you now start smelling something, especially goat meat. 
They supplied you 200 plates of gold meat, and then you forgot that uh, this is part of your supply. You just left it there. Before you realize it, gold meat will not turn green. It is part of your estate as well. You don't give that to the customer. So those things will bring it back, and that becomes a part of you shedding the money with the staff. Instead of billing her uh, for 15 plates, how much is her salary? So you now say, okay, I've made the cost with you, and you take part of it. Then when you talk about wastage too, you talk uh, it comes to start, uh, customers. Some customers might come into your place and uh, argue that uh, this paper suit they gave them is spoiled, and it's not spoiled, or the meat is bony. They gave me three parts of bones, especially Okwabi. You know, Okwabi comes with uh, the, the wolf of the cow wolf. So, once you add it to some customers, they eat it, they enjoy it. But when it gets to that bone, they now live in there that they don't like it. It's only bone is that they are not going to do it. They start arguing, and sometimes you don't want to really make noise about it to say, okay. Let's share the cost. But some of them they say, no, I'm not paying. It was born. I saw you. I've not taken anything. It is a lie. No, some of them they are not truthful. But you know, there's a way we can blend and say, okay, let's be part of this cost. Take it because of tomorrow. Okay, okay. so um, a lot of experience to share that uh, by breaking. Um, sister, let me come back to you. Um, so, uh, talking about. Okay, okay, you want to add to that? Okay. Okay, yes. So adding to that, and the way I capture, it seems like I don't have wasted it. We do somehow because, for instance, when I'm going for a decorating job, I always add contingencies. So in that way, I'm able to because there might be a a vendor who maybe supplies something. I might order for a dining, a four seater dining, and he supplies it. And maybe the map is broken or cracked somehow. You know, you might not, you know, have the conscience to tell the vendor you have to replace because you know they are struggling. So from that, uh, from your invoice, the con con contingencies that have already built the the client, there I can be able to, you know, accommodate a replacement of whatever is uh, whatever loss it is. So that's how I. Um, um, brilliant um, from from you. Uh, so, uh, talking about sustainability now, um, what are those uh, key things that keeps you driving? Um, because I know that um, sometimes in business, um, it does not go as planned sometimes, right? And um, there could be one or two downside um, of business. Um, to some persons, once that happens, um, they'll be like, no, I'm not doing any more business with you for me. Right, because of uh, little challenges. So that has accounted for reasons why you see some persons like they are moving from one business to the other because each time they encounter new challenges, they become the business, they move to some other business. So for you, you've been um, quite consistent with a particular line of business. So not like you've not been having challenges, there are, of course. So what are those things usually that need to go? I've had loads of challenges and I've had uh, situations whereby some situations whereby I want to I just want to quit, I don't want to continue anymore. But one thing that one thing that keeps me going is passion. Passion for me is what keeps me going. And then the, the need to like I want to succeed. I don't want to disappoint. And I want to continue. I've um, I've dealt with different kind of business, but all things are around style. I always want to, even if I'm doing one thing and I, 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 I'm feeling like I'm not succeeding in this, I want to go into another business that has something we do, to do with what I have passion for. I have passion for styling, I have passion for, for decorating, I have passion for fashion. So even if I'm doing, like I started with, first of all, I started with um, buying and selling of clothes, clothing items. So when I got tired of traveling, I stopped, I went into fashion designing. So I'm still within that circle of, um, of fashion. And then when I got tired of fashion and designing, I went into styling of homes. It's still, it's, it's still within that business of, of styling. And then again, I now went into hospitality. It's still within that business of 
because we have to decorate, we have to put the place in order for people to come in and like whatever you're doing. So I think one thing that drives it is, is passion. For me, one thing that drives and another thing is, if you see and you're using that, okay, there is actually, people are actually making money in this business. What is it that I'm not doing right? If you, can, if you are able to discover, to find out that thing that you're not doing right, and, if, and you're, like, you figure it out, I think it's a good thing to remain, if you remain in that circle, not necessarily that particular one you're, you're doing, you can also look for other avenues that are within that circle of business that you started with. Um, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, back to you. So, um, what, what major advice or what have worked for you over the years? Um, just like Sister said, so in business there will be challenges. Of course, I, I can imagine um, in your own line of business, there are a whole lot of challenges. But yet, you're still there, you're moving. You've not um, jettisoned the business for something else. You're consistent, you're there. Um, what are those things? Um, what's that force that has kept you? Um, um, I know passion is there. Um, so for people, like for startup, what would be the advice for them in terms of starting businesses? I said it initially when I my office puts that in business, don't just do whatever people are doing. Do what you have passion for. That is the first key. So passion is the most is the key word yeah. for business sustainable. Yeah. When uh, I came to this house, I I opened a cold door. I went to a jam and I saw that code is really spending and so on. I had small money and said, okay, let me have my own code. And uh, I did not really do a proper, thorough investigation on how the business works. So I now had a 10 ton school room, went to a papa and so on and so forth to buy frozen food for sale. When I started, I realized it was a more deeper thing. The stress, the uh, energy women, if your fish is two naira more expensive than the one they sell in Aja, they will enter a vehicle from your place to Aja to buy that one that is two naira cheaper. In the morning, they have no mind the cost of transportation. They don't care. So I really, I, I started studying it to realize that this is how this business is for you to follow it you must as things breaking you all go through around your environment check for their prices first before you start selling so you now send scouts you have, you have boys and women that you send around to check so you know if i don't have that kind of uh, uh, brain so to do that I will close up overnight. But like my business that I'm doing now, which I started on ever since, it is something that is part of me. You know, I don't need to be talk much about that. I do not know that there is a lot. So, you know, it is something that is part of me. And uh, even as I'm sleeping, I can run it. Even during Christmas period and uh, festive period, when we have more customers, you see, Staffs messing up, you know, like 10 people might resign without collecting salary. They just stop up once it's tw from the 28th, you start losing customers still on the 20th, especially people from Benway, Cross River, and so on and so forth. They start going back, and you are left alone, just me, my dad, and so a few major staffs. A lot of people, that is how they close down. But I said, no, this is just a small temptation. By January 1st, it will be over. So I, so I can take the bar. My wife takes over the kitchen. Then I bring some other food to fire down. And that is how we'll be running it for two years. So that, that, that is part of the disadvantages too. And some people might just say, ah, I don't have to do this thing myself. Let me shut down for this period. And when after the season they open up the day, they find out that they have lost so much customers because there are so many other places that are open during that first season. And once your customers go there and they treat them very well, 
Okay, so um, you mentioned them two striking things here. One um, about um, when you record a um, lot of sales during festive period, and also doing them um, carrying out price investigation within your available competitors within your mechanical environment. I think it's also very key for business starters, for any business you want to go into within your um, geography, within your space environment. You also need to carry out um, price investigation to know what your likely competitors are selling so that you know how to adjust your price and come into the market so that you have more people come around to patronize you, right? So that is very, very um, important. So, but let me stay with you. Um, so in terms of season, you know, um, weather could affect your kind of business during rainy season, dry season, um, festive periods, and all of that, even the um, increase and reduction in people's um, purchasing power can also affect your kind of business because sometimes the uh, best we get money, let me say, my go relax. Sometimes, if the money is not there, you'll be in door, you're not going out. So, how do you really adapt and adjust to all of these seasonal changes within your um, business? It's the same thing like uh, Joseph did in Egypt. You know, in every business, it's like that. There is a the season, rainy season, and there is time for hay to make hay at the time to save. Like those seasons that we are really not, when we know that, like my place now is an open bar. And uh, to run an open bar, when it rains, mostly it's the shade that I have is not enough. But because I have planned it ahead that when it rains, I'm not so far. So it is the gain I made during the dry season that I keep. So when I don't sell much, I still pay my staffs, I still pay my tax, I still do all those other things. Because I know I've seen it that during rainy season, I'm not going to make much sales. So, so what this means is that um, for people up there, they call it um, retained earnings. So more like you're using your retained earnings to cushion. Yes. Um, times when you do not have adequate sales, so more like you're planning over time. This is a clear example of business sustainability because you know that there are times you could fall short, and then you also need to keep the business going. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. I I, I love that. Um, sister, so back to you. So um, just um, talk to us, take us through how um you been able to manage seasons and all of that um within your businesses. She has more ideas and so they have the confidence to like 
tell you to okay take charge and you and do whatever you want you have to do. Thank you very much. Um, we, we have to go to a beautiful audience. Um, I know one of us or a couple of number of us we are itching to also ask questions to our wonderful panelists. So um, I would want to go to the audience and get our um, questions. Please let's um, get questions from our audience. Thank you. Opute. Opute. Action in Christ. It has been a very wonderful discussion. We have heard it from both of them. Please, we just need one or two questions. Questions from the brother side, question from the sister side, question as well from the choir angle. Any question, please? With, with or without question, because there must be a question so, to show that you have been listening properly. Okay, thank you. My name is Sister Chizoba. My question goes to Brother Ekeo because we are in the same line of business. Yes, I do grills, shawarma, chicken and chips. I sell drinks as well, but in a small, in a shop, not a big bar. Uh, we'll we'll I, come and patronize you one of these days. <laughs> and then I've been having issues with my staff. Some of them will just come work for one month. They will go and employ somebody to manage my grill section. The person didn't even give me what I really wanted. My customers were complaining that mine was even better than who I employed. And the person said, being here to improve. Because at the end of the month, I will pay him his money. So he really do not care if I'm making money or not. So because of that, I had to sack him. A lot of times it has happened. And I now resort to managing it myself, which is not really giving me what I would have you know, been having from the business. Because now I can't do all. Then the grill, I keep it to where someone orders it. So some of my customers that knows what I do, they will just come. I need this, I need that, I will prepare it and deliver it. But for business, I don't think it's something that should be happening. It should be there at any time. Anytime customer wants, they come and they pick it up. You, you need to be out there for people to see you. To see me, yes, yeah. at all times. Not that I open my shop every day, but I limit myself to the things I can handle myself, you know. But the challenges we are having sometimes never issue to sustain some of those things. They go bad. Sometimes, Operational cost. Yeah. Sometimes market, I, the business is low. Especially during rainy seasons, the business is low. And then another challenge we face is competitors. Some people think you're making lots of money before you know one shop is open there, another one is open, they will slash prices. I don't know what myself, how do they do it? Because I know I don't make much gain from what I sell. Compared, I know the price of things in the market now is really on the high side. Of course, you still want to make gain, no matter how little. And you still want to be in business. And some of the, my customers who want to patronize those new businesses, when they have test their stuff, sometimes some of them comes back to you. You know, and so during those periods, you have invested money. Your money is going down. You're collecting money from somewhere to invest in the business. And like uh, she said, passion. It's passion for me. I like making things. I like people eat my food and I say, oh, it's nice. I make nice food, nice. People order for me and I deliver. But the challenge is, is so much. Sometimes it's downcasting. So I just need you to like, encourage me or tell me how to manage some of the situations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sister. Any, First, any one more question so that we just so that we can know it's just to answer, or we can take it one at a time. Okay, we can take it. Let's take one at a time. You know, because like I said initially when I started, it's by the special grace of God, you know, and and wisdom too. Those stuff, thank you, man. What is happening here? I've not seen this type of thing before. What is happening now? You can't get your better stuff anywhere. So what you do, you bring them in, you train them yourself. Because you are the one that owns the place. And you know how to do that. You know how to do You know how to do it. You know like in my place now, if I don't have the staff in my kitchen, I can man my kitchen. If I don't have an accountant, I can man my council section. On tip any when I get it. You will then you have to give me the points on me and train that person to your own specification. The way we cook our pupesu is quite different from the way my neighbors cook pupesu. We are the ones that brought to Kudu to the whole of this area. And if you taste Ukudu, Ukudu is Ukudu. You cannot. Pupesu and yam is different from Ukudu. You understand? So 
you you have your own brand and then uh, you know what you do. So you still struggle and employ. There are some few good people out there. Employ, don't don't relent. Employ. You need people to start with at times you need to take your son somewhere, you need to or God wants to send you on an error. You need to, even you have to go to market to buy those things and come back. That means the shop will be closed when you are not there, which is wrong. The shop must be opened. And for the shop to be opened, you need somebody there all the time. Understand me? And then your account, like you like you said, your account is daily. If somebody is there, don't if you have four fish, great four fish. If you have a shawarma, the bread, the sausage and everything. We can't everything. One by one. Even the amount of garbage we use for shawarma, I know. I know the amount of garbage I use for one shawarma. So don't come at me. So everything is on record. My thing that we use is cooking for the soup. A cartridge of the soup. I know how many. We tell them this is how many they use. You know the number? Yes. This is very, very important. You understand me? That. So, like, somebody must be there. They are very difficult to come by. But there are agents. I can put out this service. I can give you numbers of agents that you can call it. They are networking now. So, don't give you yeah. no more. At least, somebody must be there. They will not train the person. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Okay. I've heard it from brother. Let's hear it from our from sister. Okay, sir. My question is for brother Kosaya. In the area of stealing, stop stealing from you. Sir, please, I would like to know how you you were able to handle it over these years and how you have been able to cope with it. For instance, um, I have um, this um, boy who was working for me. He's a very hard working boy, yes, but He's stealing from us continuously. Like, for instance, in a day, if you bake like four bags of uh, flour, out of that four bag, like 20 or 30 bread, we got burnt. So I've been managing him on that area. I don't want to dismiss him because of that. So there was a day I came in and took a record of his uh, cells that day. I noticed that about 3,000 were missing. So I keep covering up for him because my brother, if you notice something like that, once you notice that you are stealing from him, you are a goner. So he has been sacking many of them. So this particular boy has been protecting him, knowing that he's stealing from me. So an event happened in, like three weeks ago. When my husband came in, I was not around, I wasn't feeling fine. So he came in. When he took record, he noticed that for the past three weeks, I have not been to the bakery. We have lost over hundred and something, and this guy couldn't account for it. So immediately they dismissed him immediately. So the boy was chatting me on WhatsApp of what my husband did to him that he don't like it. And I asked him, what did you do? He told me that what I said he bought some bread. I said that one is aside. You know what you did. So what I'm asking you, I have been feeling guilty about it because he's working. He's working very well. He wrote some errands for me that other staff doesn't do. Okay, but ever since then, they dismiss him. I've been feeling so guilty. So, how do you overcome all this? It happens in my own home, too. You know, I, my business, I run it with my wife. And uh, she has a small store, too, for some of the staffs. Like, there is this girl, Ella. She, when she is near, my wife protests her a lot, like you said. But that, that is not the issue. We're talking about stealing now. And then you know Job is still. He will never change. He will never. So the best thing is to let him leave you alone. The next one that will come, you will show him how difficult you are. The things, the measures you have put in place, that if they steal one naira or they take one pen and sell, you will know. When you put those measures in place, you know, as soon as they come in, they see how strict your accounting system is. Um, that you take proper record, the uh, stealing will not come down to various level. It will not become shortages. You will be having personal shortages. So those shortages can be removed from their salaries. Or some of them, they just dip their hand when they have issues at home. Some of these people, their mother called them. 
their brothers and sisters call them for problems. Some of them, one of their uh, sisters, uh, did one operation or the other, they need this X amount. They don't wait to ask you the owner. What they do from their sales before they take record in the money, they just take and send to the same place. Or sometimes you do it sales. Instead of sending to your account, you now divert funds to their own personal account. Even with your signage in the tele, uh, your customer that all transactions should be sent to your own account. They still give their own account to the customers. In the morning, they were supposed to balance account. They start crying and say, I don't know what's happened, no. but I don't know, not be doing all this popular. You know? So, <laughs> so, so there are certain measures we do. Don't be employed, you make sure that you must employ you through an agent. The agent knows your character and things like that. Then you must have an ID phone. So once you take my money, I take one, I take your phone. That's the first step. And they all know. Once you take my money, I take your phone first. Before Ross is uh, me and you are walking in that you. He knows. I just keep your phone. Or as soon as you have something, I call. They tell me that you have to. I say, take his phone. They share their phone more than anything on this planet with the SIM card. Don't take a phone without the SIM card. Take the phone. And, you know, and two, be close to you. Police station close to you. Because you begin to police station. Because you are doing business in Lagos State. You'll be a friend of police. <laughs> You have to go to the station. So it is normal. Don't take it as if we are all Christians. We read the Bible, we do things, but this is business now. And these people that you brought into, you are still sitting there. But they don't, they don't care whatever means, but they just want to take. And at the end of the month, they have stolen from you, they still want you to pay them salary. You'll be the first to announce your name that but I know they pay, but I know they pay salary. But it's not true. You are paying. They are owing you, that is why you have not paid that particular person. And once anybody is owing more than the required amount of salary, you tell the person to stop you on that day. Take the person's property and, you know, call the agent. This person is owing you this. The person should sign. You have taken the phone. You sign on the phone and so on and so forth until you pay my money. So that is how we will be managing it for now. Instead of going to police every day, I just... So, so the, 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 the short message is um, keep emotions aside when um, dealing with business emotion wow. please and then be focused and be straight. Uh, okay, just to add to um, Sister Chizzy's um, question, so um, what advice I would want to give is so when you are in an environment with your competitors, even if the price, um, they are selling for a more um, reduced price than yours, but if you can stick to quality, quality is very, very important. People don't compromise. People are willing to part with so much just for quality. So, yeah, so always maintain quality. Do not try to compromise quality because of what people around you are doing. Your quality will um, set you apart. And maybe we can just um, get one more round and then we'll wind up. Any more questions? Okay, sister. We have two questions one from the brother's side and one from questions. The panelists here, um, it's been quite entertaining, quite educative. I, I'm sure all of us here have learned one or, one or two things and we are going back home with substance to add to our various businesses. Thank you very much. Um, um, okay, all right, so um, the MC, um, thank you, the MC with, um, Thank you very much. All built. All built. Action in Christ. As you can see, it is a very interactive section. Sorry, it's a little bit more delayed because we have been finding it very enjoyable. We had a good time discussing with the two speakers. So it, is, it has been a very wonderful section. Shortly, I will be calling on uh, Brother Uwa. We have a presentation for our two, for our two panelists. Uh, Brother Jacob Uwa, sir. Please, sir. You can come for us and do the presentation for us. Our two panelists here, we have a presentation for them. I thank you once more for your time. Brother Nekio Amisai, as well as Sister Jessica Nekio uh, Just before we, before we present um, um, our little, very little talk to our 
panelists, I just want to also express my thanks, thanks to God Almighty, and then secondly to our panelists. As a matter of fact, I reached out to them within the week, very short notice, but as soon as I got in touch with them, they were, they were up for it, they gave their um, um, consent, their availability immediately, and please, 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 I want to appeal to us to put our hands together once again. I'm sure we all, all of us, myself inclusive, we have learned quite a lot from this session and we will take it out and try to do something good uh, with it. So without further ado, I will only call on Brother Jacob Owa to present first to Brother Ekio Apisai. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Please let's usher them back to their seats with a very warm applause. Let's usher them. Let's also put our hands together for our Hebrew moderator who has been moderated this session. Thank you very much. So back to you, MC, for section two.